It's, it's such an honor to be here, and I bless God for the life of every one of you. And uh, thank you for supporting uh, my friend, uh, Pastor Emmanuel. And uh, I bless God for also for the new leadership. And we thank God for uh, those that are going out of uh, leadership in, from this particular church. I personally believe that God is going to use them mightily. You know, because whenever the church has to grow, God has to let people, you know, move ahead, you know, so that they'll go and do different uh, uh, things. So I personally believe that God has a plan for you, and every one of the plans that God has for you will surely come to pass. Then I also believe that the new leaders that have been chosen, I believe that grace has also been given to you to help us move to the next phase of uh, ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise Jesus. I love everything about this church. I love the worship. And actually, the worship, uh, the songs that you sang is in accordance with what I am about to preach today. And, you know, I, one of the things that I observed that I think um, I enjoyed but I didn't understand that much was the announcement, you know. You know, they kept on. Their English, where I come from, my English is very slow. Their Eng English is very fast. So, <laughs> but one thing that I heard, it was about the food, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they kept on talking, talking. I was like, okay, 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 trying to catch up. Then I heard about the food, and I heard about, the, you know, the stomach. So I'm ready for the food. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise Jesus. Wherever you are, just lift up your voice. Bless the name of our God. Give him praise. Give him worship. Lift up your voice. Give our Jesus praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for who you are and what you continue to do in our lives, oh God. We thank you that your presence is here, oh God. We thank you that you have come to be a blessing to us, oh God. May your name, oh God, be exalted, oh God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God. We ask the Lord you will speak forth your word. You use me as an instrument to bring your, forth your word. Let it touch me. Let it touch each and every one of us. And let Jesus be glorified in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. So, my sermon title is very simple um, and it's very interesting. You know, the title is, What is Your Name? And it looks like whether, you know, you don't know your name, but I'm not asking about your name. I'm just asking about, you know, because name, names describe an object. So when we mention name, not just necessarily uh, the name of a person, but when we mention uh, Miniso, when I, I mean, like, I will use my pronunciation will be a little bit different from yours. So we would say Minnesota, but I'm th I think you would say Minnesota or whatever. <laughs> you know, where I come from, we pronounce every letter, you know, and where, you know, like this place, you know, you, certain letters are not pronounced, right? You know, so you say Minnesota or whatever, I mean, you know. So when we mention Minnesota, you know, there is something that comes to mind. When we mention New York, there is something that comes to mind. You know, so you realize that, you know, names are given for a certain reason and for a certain purpose. We realize that when Jesus Christ was about to be born, you know, his name came. So there is an essence for a name being given. You know, and when you move from that, sometimes when I was in school, you know, my parent, before I was born, my parent gave me a name. But when I went to school, uh, my student or the people that I was in the class with, they also gave me a name. But I didn't like the name. You know, sometimes people will give you names based on what they see you. So let's say if they see you as a, a fire person, a fire brand person, they could say, oh, this person is a fire brand person. You know, and one of the things that I've come to realize is that sometimes in life, life happens to you. And when life happens to you, it changes you and gives you a certain name. And some of the names are not the names that we actually want. You know, so let's say, please forgive me if you have ever experienced anything of such. You are not a, a that person I'm talking about. I'm just giving an example. Let's say you've been through divorce. You realize that sometimes if you don't take time, you become certain bitter based on the experiences that you have been through. Or maybe you've had an accident. You know, maybe somebody has broken your heart. Maybe somebody has betrayed you. You realize that sometimes it leaves you in a certain way, you know, that you become different from what you are supposed to be. 
And from the scripture that we'll be reading today, we realize that, you know, so our paraphrase, uh, we'll be reading from Genesis chapter 32, verse 22 to 31. And uh, I will not read, but I'll tell the story. So we see the story here of Jacob. He met an angel of the Lord, and the Bible said they wrestle. And, you know, he said, bless me. He was struggling. He said, bless me. Then the angel of the Lord asked him, what is your name? Then this is what he said, my name is Jacob. It wasn't because the angel of the Lord didn't know his name. The angel knew his name. But the name that has been given to him by his parent, you know, when you study what Jacob literally means, uh, it means somebody who is a supplanter, somebody who is a cheat, somebody who is, you know, um, you know, a trickster or whatever. And that is exactly what he had become. He tricked his brother to take his blessings. Although it has been planned that the blessings will come to him, but what he did, you know, he deceived his father. He went there and, you know, so that name was having a bearing on him. You know, so when the angel of the Lord met him, he asked for his name. You know, in order for him to be blessed, his name must be changed. You know, so he asked him for his name and he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, now from this day forth, your name will not be Jacob, but you shall be called Israel. His name needed to be changed in order for the blessings of God to come upon him. I'm not saying that you should go change your name. <laughs> but what I literally mean is that sometimes... Based on the things that we have gone through, we change as a person. So you could be a sweet person, but after you have been through something, you realize that it changes you. There are people who are not able to love that much because of what they have been through. And so it prevents them and it hinders them from receiving whatever is supposed to come upon them. But when they had an encounter with God, Jacob had an encounter with God, based on all the things that he has been through, he was changed. His name was changed. This morning, if I'm talking about changing your name or whatever, what I literally mean to say is that you must come under the grace of God, and coming under the grace of God, he could change you from who you have become. Sometimes who we are is not what we actually want to be. You know, I recently realized that, you know, sometimes, you know, being a pastor of a church, I've been pastoring for a while. I've been in full-time ministry for 23 years. I started quite young, you know, and I've been in full-time. And I, at a certain point in my life, I realized that, you know, I, I became hardened towards certain people. You know, that wasn't who I was initially. But I realized that in the course of my ministry to people, I've become because I've been betrayed several times, you know, and based on all the things that I've been through, I realize that when people walk into my life, I'm very careful, I'm observing, you know, but unlike before, when people come, I'm just open, you know, ready to help them. But at a certain point in my life, I realize that when people come, I'm like, okay, 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 you know, I take time. To, so life has happened to me and it has changed me from who I need to be. And so I sought after God and God said, this is not who you are supposed to be. When people walk into your life, receive them, embrace them. And you know, when they hurt you, it's, it's, it's their, their problem, not you. You don't have to let situation change you to become like them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to let the, the things that you have been through change you from, you know, so many of us, we have actually changed. You know, when, when you meet the Bible, no wonder the Bible tells us that, you know, we must come to Jesus or to God like a child. You know, he said, if you want to come to me, be like a child. You know, because child, they don't remember offenses. You can offend a child today, tomorrow he will see you and he will never remember. You know, but as we are growing, you realize that sometimes we keep certain things. So when you meet somebody who has hurt you, I'm careful about you. <laughs> or you say in your head, watch out, you know, but a child doesn't do that. And so whenever we come before the presence of God, we must allow the Spirit of God to breathe over us. And we must allow ourselves to be changed back to who we are supposed to be, not based on what life has happened to us. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, so many of us have changed. Many of us, we have changed. You know, one time I had an accident, and I think it has actually dented me. 
you know, I was driving somewhere and all of a sudden a car came through me and pushed me off the road. Since that time, when I'm driving and I'm about to negotiate a curve, it's so many years, it's over 10 years, I still remember it. So I just check my mirror. Is anybody coming? <laughs> you know, it's, it's good to be careful. But I realize that based on what I've been through, it has changed me in a certain way. And sometimes some of those things are good. It changes you to become good. But the ones that are not good, we must come under the power of God and allow the power of God to change us back into who we are supposed to be. So when Jacob met the angel of the Lord, they asked him, what is your name? He mentioned his name. The name that he mentioned was a name that had been given to him by his father. And he said, from this day forth, in order for that blessing to come upon you, your name must be changed. And today, I believe that somebody's name emotionally is being changed. You know, sometimes when you go through an emotional abuse, you can't laugh. There are people who can't really laugh. Because all that you have seen around them is not love. And so sometimes what we get from people is not who they actually are. It's what they have been through. But that is the more reason why when we come to the presence of God, we must allow ourselves for the Spirit of God to come upon us. For when the Spirit of God comes upon us, He is able to release us from any form of captivity in which we are. Because some of us, we are not in our actual potential. Praise Jesus. And today we are trusting God that anybody that has been through anything, the power of God will come upon you and you'll be set free. Because when the Bible says, he who the son set free is free indeed. And you know, most of us are emotionally not in a stable environment. But we pray that the spirit of God will come upon us. And when the Spirit of God comes upon us, we shall be released. One of the things that I love about this church, when I came and I observed, oh, the way people love, you know, and everybody, you know. And, and I love white people. Do you know why I love them? You know, ah. and I love, <laughs> no, obviously I'm a black person, so I love blacks too. No, do you understand? I'm a black person, so I love black. By default, I love blacks. But I love white people because when I came into the service today, one thing I observed is that on every table there is a tissue. You know? And do you know what we use it for? We cry. Oh. <laughs> you know, because we easily love and we easily allow ourselves to be moved by the Spirit of God. When we're, you know, inducting people into leadership, you know, Back home in Africa, when you're inducting, I'm actually uh, installing one of my boys as a pastor. I'm sure he'll be standing like this, you know. No tears will ever fall. <laughs> but, you know, we are very... So when we come into the presence of God, we must allow the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God to breathe over us. We need not to be what we have been through. And that is the reason why I ask you, what is your name? Your name shouldn't be what you have been through. Your name should be what God gave you. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So you shouldn't take off anything. That is the reason why the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are burdened. All ye that are carrying loads, come to me. When you come, Jesus will lift you up. I don't know whatever you have been through, but I came today and I believe that the Spirit of God is here to release you and to give you a new name. You know, a new name. Literally, your name is not going to change, right? But he'll give you a new name. Recently, I was ministering, uh, I think last week I was ministering in Florida. And there was a lady that I called for, and I was praying with the lady. And I realized that, you know, the lady was bottled up. You know, just like, uh, uh, I was going to say Coke, but I realized I need to say soda, you know. <laughs> Where I come from, we call soda Coke. So, on, 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 uh, before I went to preach, they asked me, what would you drink after service? I said, Coke. They were like, what is Coke? <laughs> then someone whispered and said, soda. I said, ah, yeah, yeah, soda. <laughs> but you see, with a soda bottle, when you shake it, you shake it, 
you shake it. What happens? It explodes because it builds up pressure. And sometimes, based on all the things that we have gone through, there is pressure on us. Based on some of the things that we have been through in our families. You know, some of us, we have come from broken families and stuff like that. And based on all the things that you have been through, it shapes you into a different way. But listen, when you come before the presence of God, the power of God is able to change you. It's able to change you. That's the more reason why when we come into the presence of God, we must allow ourselves and tell God, I have come before thee. Touch me and change me. And today, anybody that is going through such situation, we will not ask you to mention whatever you're going through, but we'll be praying for you that God will release you into your full potential. Praise Jesus. Shall we please rise to our feet in the name of Jesus? Now lift up your voice and begin to pray. If there are a few things that you have been through that you are trusting God, yeah. if there are a few things that you have been through that you are trusting God to touch you, and to release you. I don't know whatever you've been through, but just lift up your voice. As the worship team joins us and we sing a few uh, songs, lift up your voice and pray and ask God to touch you. Ask God to minister to you. Ask the Spirit of God to touch you in a way that, that, that you'll be set free. The Bible tells us that Jacob was touched. Jacob was touched by the angel of God, and based on that, he was changed. He wasn't the same. He became Israel. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Lord, change us, O God. Lord, change us, O God. We want to be like you, O Jesus. We want to be.